Why, hello there. Looking for Austrian Napoleonic Hazards, are we? Well? Oh, God. That's your chair. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. Oh, yeah, great. that's you making a rude noise with your chair. Uh -huh. Right, so these are Napoleonic Austrian Hussars, 1805 to 1815, um, which are, has a, actually a massive timeline there. In those 10 years, the stuff that happened will fill many, 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 many history books. So there we go. Right, I'll just get straight on to the figures and then we'll just talk about the Hussars. So these are the horses for them and i've already done a review of these because these are the same horses you get in the yeah um the dragoon box um and we didn't really have much to say about dragoons because we don't really know anything about austrian dragoons um so we didn't really have any history stuff to talk about with them um maybe when we've painted them up and read about them a bit we will but not at the moment uh, these are a new buy um so the horses are exactly the same as the dragoons and they're just two pieces of horse you stick together and then two different heads you can pick to see what expression the horse has got. Then we have the command stand. Now this is exactly the same as the, no it's not exactly the same, it's the same layout as the dragoons um, but these are for the command. I've got it upside down. Right, that's why it doesn't look right. Right, there we go. So they are the Hussar heads with a lovely big plume. Very, very colourful Hussars. All Hussars are colourful unless you're British. And then all British Hussars wear blue. Dark blue. That's it. If you're light cavalry, you wear blue. If you're heavy cavalry, you wear red. Is a general rule for the British. Um, Austrians, lots of nice colours. Lots of different colours. And interesting. You see here, you have the guy in dolman, and then you have the plessé, which you stick on to the side of the dolman. I just uh, bring it around. Um, that's the plessé on the inside is designed to attach to his back. Um, so you can have them with or without for Hussar uniform. Uh, for you know, because some hussars you have, you have a weird sort of jacket you hold on your shoulder, which is a plessé, or is it the dolman? No, the dolman's a suit, um, and it looks pretty good. It's it's they're going to be interesting to put together. I'm looking at you now. Mm -hmm. You looking forward to putting them together? It'll be difficult and very time consuming. <laughs> yeah, well, you like that though, don't you? Sure. He gives you something to do. Um, it's quite good. Uh, Officer-wise, we have a nice collection of different things the officer can be doing he's got a pistol in his hand or he's waving a pointy stick um, and what else have we got there we go there's a trumpet and no flag because it's a hussar and hussars didn't have flags did they I don't know why I look for a flag then that's a bit silly and I've got another officer's head just there which he's got a great expression on him look at that that is awesome. Right, so that's the guy there. And then we have a collection of cavalry. And these are exactly the same as the officer in the way that they have dolman and plessy. So they have a little fluffy jacket that sticks on. And if you look, the fluffy jacket is waving in the wind because the hussar is charging forward shouting huzzah or whatever Hungarian word for huzzah is. I don't know where Hazar comes from. I know it's the, it was originally the Hazar to, to, is, to, is to charge. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I think that actually comes from British, from English. Tell them I, I, know, I, I know it sounds French, but I seem to remember reading that it was a British idiom which was adopted by the French and then spread to the Hungarians, uh, sorry, the Austrians, which then would have spread. Um, you do hear Hazar, Hazar a lot when they're about to do a charge. Well, that was the thing. There was a huzzah, you shout. That's the huzzah. No, no you just to say charge. charge. For, to charge forward is a huzzah. When you, when you, uh, a huzzah of horses. And i got some more dolmen there flying in the wind. Uh, sorry, Plessy. They look good, don't they? I do like them. You've got a decent collection of swords, just the same as the dragoons, actually, but these to be, seem to be slightly more pointy people. Yeah, because they're um, charging. Yes. Because yeah. they are, yeah. And you've got, of course, musket to go on the side, um, which is just great. And the same hats with a little uh, car. It's a carbine. 
on a musket. Um, uh, 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 Austrian hussars and Austrian cavalry would actually carry muskets or uh, would carry carbines, and they would be they would have ammunition for them. Um, French carbine carbineers, uh, sorry, not carbineers, uh, French hussars didn't tend to ha- carry ammunition for their carbines. They would only have one shot. What's like as, as a charging shoot and then go? No, they wouldn't use it in combat. They would if they would scout ahead of the army and if they saw a deer, they would shoot the deer and bring dinner back. God, that's actually what they did. <laughs> um, they wouldn't use generally. They wouldn't use it unless they were de- deployed to skirmish, which you not know, wasn't that often. But on the Eastern Front, it certainly was. Um, if you were deploying your mounted troops to skirmish, then they would be issued ammunition. But generally, they wouldn't carry it with them. Because they very seldom needed it, so you just had your one shot, in case you saw a deer or something. Um, for the Austrians, I think they actually did carry full ammunition; they were fully equipped, and they did fire from the saddle as well. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Thing. Um, so yes, that's the guys, um, and we also have a card which uh, gives you the different uniforms, um, which are all quite nice uh, we do do a lot of hussars in six millimeter for people and we've done all these uniforms uh, so doing them in 28 mil is going to be interesting and a nice collection of hussars there looking quite good they look good i like them um hussars what do we know about hussars austrian absolutely nothing I do. Uh, Austrian Hussars were primarily recruited from Hungary or the countries around Hungary um, because they were a lot more equestrian. They they had a lot more people who naturally rode horses and so the Hussars naturally came from those regions whereas the German parts of the Austro-Hungarian Empire um, they tended to live in normal houses like normal people in farm and stuff and didn't have much wilderness and so didn't have a lot of horses. Um, Hungary would be a little bit like the Wild West. It's on the border with the Turks, so you've constantly got problems on the border. There's always raiding parties coming over. Um, so, yeah, uh, it kind of made sense to bring most of our regiments from that region. I can hear a rabbit eating. Drinking. Drinking, yes. Um, so that's just an interesting thing that that I know. And that's about it. Really. All I really know about Austrians is that there's an awful lot of them between Napoleonic times. Yes, huge amounts of them, despite Napoleon's attempt to cut the population a bit. Um, I would assume that actually, if you've got all the Hazar regiments, they would all speak different languages. Yeah, obviously, because they've been recruited from different areas. Yes. Like the Austrian Empire, um, so, I take it then. Yes, so some would speak whatever Romanian speaks, some would speak whatever Hungarian speak, Hungarian, I suppose. Um, some would speak Croat, some would speak um, the, the, all, all different, it's, it's a polyglot. Of Where did Napoleon's empire spread to? Um, Before it was cut down. Yeah. Moscow. Well no, because he never took Prussia. He took Moscow. He didn't take Prussia though. He did take, well Prussia surrendered and joined the French. Until the Russians bet the fr- French and, and they changed sides. sides. <laughs> right, great. <laughs> If I ever made one mistake, I should have bet the Yes, um, yes, that's, that's the Germans for you. You can't trust them. Um, Napoleon actually created Germany. Now, Germany didn't exist before Napoleon. Yeah, it was called Prussia. Yes, and D- Napoleon had huge problems having to fight different German states because the Germans were just uppity and, you know, what Germans are like. And so Napoleon was bored and sick and tired of this, and so he forced the Confederation of the Rhine. He got all the German city-state leaders together and said, look, I'm locking you in here until you can come up with an agreement. And they kind of came up with a confederacy of states. Um, A lot later on, a guy called Bismarck um, faked faked a threat to Germany to get everyone to unite and become become Germany the country. Um, A bit like Babylon 5 when Captain Sheridan goes and blows up some rocks in space. Mm. And then denies he ever did it. And so everyone assumes there's an alien out there that's dangerous. And so they all 
create the federation in, in that yeah that, same thing and there's lots of people who've never seen Babylon 5 and I've not got a clue what we're talking about <laughs> but you and me we know all about it because we bought the box set so it's great um, yeah to, that, that's the confederation of the Rhine and none of these guys would have been in the confederation of the Rhine because they came from Hungary or that region of Austria sort of Hungary and Croatia and all those weird made up countries that no one's ever heard of so what are Austrians do to get now because we've got We've got um, the infantry, we've got the cavalry. Right, well we need at least another box of hussars. We're going to need, probably need more, two, uh, more than two. Then we need a couple of boxes of chevalier and we need, we've already got the, we're going to paint those ones up as Karazia. So then we're going to need a couple of boxes of dragoons. So I take it Austrians are just a cavalry heavy army? Uh, no, they were everything heavy army. Right. They did everything in mass. And their regiments were twice bigger than any other country's regiments, even bigger than the Russian regiments. Um, their cavalry regiments were bigger. Every, it was just big. Everything was big. There were just so many Austrians. It's unbelievable. And, yeah. As for Austrian infantry, um, it probably take us about three years to paint them. <laughs> that's it for the Hussars? Yes, that's it for the Hussars. Um, so we do actually know a bit about Hussars. Um, sorry we didn't know much about the Karazias and all that because we don't know anything about that I only know about this from stuff I've read from when I was reading about the Austro-Hungarian Empire they mentioned the Hussars, that's the only thing um, so that's it um, do you want to do an outro? oh, oh, there's a little aside if you check out eBay page if you're interested in any of these figures painted up it'll be in the description looking like these guys I'll put a link in the description um, because as we do the new regiments we'll put a copy of them on eBay and if anyone wants them I'll alter them up yeah um, so because you know it's something to do isn't it because we quite enjoy doing 28 mil and we're trying to shift away from the 6 mil at the moment because it's 6 mil <laughs> yeah the 6 mil which has got so much 6 mil stuff and you're getting and older you're frail age so your eyes are starting to dwindle it's not it's just <laughs> a lot of our a lot of our business has now come in since um Nurgle gave us a gift um, and everyone got ill um, we've I've noticed gaming shifting more to, more to 28 and it's certainly to play. the orders we've been getting we didn't get a lot of orders during plague but the orders we did get when we were going 28 mil uh, larger scales than 6 which is which is weird but I guess it's because people started having to game on their own and having their own figures in 6 mil probably is quite sad <laughs> if you have them in 28 mil at least you can put them on a desk and say look how good they look yeah. um, sorry that's it that's an aside um, thank you very much for watching and you do the outro if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of the Austrian Napoleonic Cazars that's everything from me and everything from him goodbye see ya